everyone, it's Mish here, um, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, um, thanks for stopping by, and I hope uh, that you keep coming back. Um, and if you do keep coming back um, and supporting me, um, I see you, and I so appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, so today, we're going to be working in the Marguerite Miller Collage Challenge uh, it is week 47, so we're into uh, the middle of November. I started the challenge uh, using a moleskin sketchbook, which has uh, quite thin pages. Um, my book measures, because it's sometimes hard to tell online, but my book measures about five and a quarter uh, by uh, eight. And... Um, I started out with different uh, types of collages for me. Um, I do have a process, but sometimes I try to, uh, you know, do do something a little di uh, different, like uh, surreal or um, more of a of a I guess image builder uh, type thing. Um, but I consistently like this kind of style. Uh, and I like to try to find a theme um, of all the prompts. So the prompts this week are a key, your handwriting, something that represents an event, winter, origami, or anything folded. Uh, bonus is something painted. Uh, so with all the, the challenges, um, you can swap out a prompt. Um, and if you're really struggling, at the end of the day, the way I kind of think about um, the weekly prompts is it's prompting you to go on to find some images and to create a collage um, that that you like that's visually appealing to you um, so it's not in the beginning I kind of I looked at it as a um, like an exam like I had to have these points and then I had to try to make the most creative thing with it uh, and I found that when I thought about it that way, it kind of stifled me a bit because as, as the challenge, um, if you kind of go back to some of the points of the challenge, um, which comes with the, with the prompts, you, you can buy these on Etsy or uh, I'm not sure if Marguerite Miller has them on her website or not. Um, but determine if you're able to find all five prompts. The, the bonus is there in case you, you need to sw swap out one. Um, choose a, a glue book you'd like to create in. Use a piece of scrap uh, pattern paper in, in your collage or as background. And then use other things to embellish, like a sticker, rubber stamp, anything else that you would like. Um, so you, you do have creative license. Um, so in saying that, what I thought I would do um, for uh, today, um, I've had to alter my book and then I ended up having to take some pages out because it was a little bit too small. Um, but when I start my collage, I start with my blank pages and then I figure out kind of in my mind, do I have a theme here? And sometimes I don't notice or I won't be able to pick um, a theme until I've found some I uh, images. And what you create um, ultimately results from what you have available. Um, so you may look at somebody online and think, oh my gosh, I'd love to do that. But if you don't have the resources that they have, um, then it's going to be harder for you to, you to do that. So I kind of get in my mind a little theme if I can. This week I found was a little bit harder. Um, and I do find that I spend a lot of time thinking about it or finding the prompts. So to do a collage, weekly collage challenge like this for me um, can be very time intensive. Um, so, but but what I thought I would start with this morning is just going over some of the things that I've considered um, for, for this. And I really don't have an idea. So I keep a little plastic um, thing that I got at the dollar store of, of little images. And I've made little index card things just out of uh, scrap card stock. Um, and... Um, so I've just gone through this this morning. I haven't used this for a while, uh, and I just thought, well, I'm going to run through through this and start to um, to look for some images. So 
I've just pulled out a, a bunch of things. I have um, a daily desk calendar um, from Mar Mar Marjolaine Baston. Um, and I absolutely love her watercolors. So I've pulled out kind of some winter, th winter uh, theme scenes. And I found in my stash just some envelopes, which um, could be a folded, uh, a folded item. For the folded item, I also um, uh, found this, these blankets, those folded blankets, um, for something painted. Um, again, any of these watercolors, um, because those are painted. I found this red door, which I thought, <laughs> looking at what elks that I've, I've uh, pulled out, I'm not really sure that's going to go. Um, again, another winter scene. Some things that re represent um, events, uh, tickets, train tickets, vouchers, um, uh, some other envelopes in case I decide I want to do like a little embellishment in a different style, and uh, painted houses. Uh, I found that little key there as well as uh, this little key that I have here. So, so that might make an appearance. Some more win winter themes, uh, some more fo folded letters. So those were things that I pulled out of my little uh, bins there. And then I went to some of the other resources that I had. So some of the labels that I have already printed, um, there's some little envelopes, um, or at least a facsimile of an envelope. So I could use that. I found this little, um, label that says blankets and I, I'm really thinking that I would like to use that so I think I'm kind of thinking that this is something I might try to build around and and that's what I I do sometimes is I'll start gathering stuff and then I'll find an image that I think yes that's I really want that in my collage and then I try to build something cohesive around that image um I have other tickets here that might represent an event, so I'll, I'll look through that. Um, again, some more tickets. Um, an event may also be um, related to travel, so like a po like um, a postcard sent home, which, which then a stamp um, could be a representation of uh, of an event. Um, uh, uh, so I got some more little labels, and these ones here I pulled. Um, your handwriting. So maybe I'll write a few things that I, that I would wish for in the coming year or some little de details about something today that I can stick in, in the collage. So I've pulled those out. Um, and then I also have a big, um, not big, but it's um, maybe, I don't know what size it is, 13 by 13 um, paper, a cardboard box that I got from Ikea, like a little um, file storage box. Um, and as I'm going through harvesting magazines, um, I do collect the images. And this one here is plants, flowers, and trees. Um, so when I was going through this one, I this kind of reminded me of winter. I'm not really sure if it is a winter scene or it could be spring, I guess, or early spring. But it reminded me just of the colors of, of winter here in, in Halifax, in Nova, in Nova Scotia. We, we get those sort of pastel um, skies um, with, with, the, with, the, with the flying snow. Um, there's also like a little winter scene there. So I went through some of my files and, and, and thought about what, what might work. And then um, I had this image here of this cardinal which reminded, which is a winter scene and also reminded me kind of of Christmas and the Cardinal of Winter. So I kind of thought, well, maybe I'll look, um, I'll find something in my bird book that might be kind of wintry. Um, I didn't really see anything there, but, um, but there's all kinds of books. I get mo most of my, my books at the thrift stores. And again, in Nova Scotia or in Halifax, um, we're a little bit limited in the thrift stores uh, that we do have. And, um, and then I, I like the books, like watercolor books, um, and those are harder to find here. When I lived in the UK, um, you could find some sort of a watercolor book, watercolor plants, watercolor birds, animals, um, at, at almost any thrift store, um, but it is harder here. Um, 
And then I kind of thought uh, m maybe I'd find something in one of the magazines again um, from from the thrift store. And um, this book here is one I got um, at the thrift store and it did have sort of some wintry scenes. Uh, so so those are just some ideas of, of where I go um, to try to find inspiration or try to get some things together that will then make a cohesive um, collage uh, for me. So I'm going to just go away, kind of play with my images, try to get something together, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've um, come back uh, and I have my images that I think will work okay. So I just need to get my prompts there. Uh, so uh, the first thing that I'm going to put down, um, and this would fit either as um, uh, something painted or as a winter scene, is I really liked this tree. It just reminded me kind of of winter here. I'm just using um, some Elmer's glue. Uh, with something like this, it could warp the paper. This is really thin magazine paper, uh, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. Uh, this is a micro tip, so uh, I don't put a lot. Um, I want to make a place for my prompt here. Just hang on one sec. So I don't usually put a lot of glue down. You don't need a lot of glue um, for paper on paper, especially in the glue book like this, which isn't going to undergo a lot of stress. So I'm going to put this kind of close to the topish cuz it is a big it is a big image and I'm going to get that right down in the seam so that the book will close okay um so there's my first image and then um beside that I want to put this little reindeer guy but I think I'll do this side first so for my event, I just found a ticket um, to a random event that I thought would, the color scheme went, and the first three letters, or the first couple letters are DE, which immediately just made me think of kind of December and maybe an event, a Christmas event or something. So I'm just going to randomly put that, oops, put that on there. I often put background pa uh, papers, um, just pick out some colors that um, would go with my theme. So I did pick out kind of this purpley hue um, and then just a couple others, but I didn't really think I needed that. So I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna put one down. And then for a painted item, again, um, so this I guess would be my wintry scene. And this here would be uh, a painted item. I just really love that little image. So I'll get that down. Okay, and I just want to sort of make um, this collage on this side look centered and kind of even. So I'm going to pull that down. As I'm looking around, you know, I'm looking at my margins, making sure that you know, it doesn't look side heavy or, or um, you know, t top or bottom heavy. Okay, so then on this side, I really liked this little deer, and this was another little winter scene. Um, and I think I'll put, just want to check, I'm going to use these blankets as a folded item. So I want him kind of right underneath the, uh, the, the blanket. There's a little edge there. And I want the blankets to kind of go right up to... Maybe I'll put that a little bit higher. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, for another little part of the winter scene, Mr. Deer. We do tend to see quite a few deer here. And uh, they seem to know when hunting season is. You don't really see many deer during hunting season. And then, once the season's over with, 
Okay, so then I have this little label. It says blankets, which I thought was really cute. So we'll get our little folded folded item down. I was just thinking, I was looking at my prompts and, and thinking, yeah, it is something, anything folded. Well, those blankets are definitely folded. And the blankets, I think, kind of goes with the overall palette and reminds me kind of of wintry, cozy weather where, you know, you pull out the blankets and, and it was just a fluke that I found this little label about blankets. That's how things work. If you just, sometimes I have no idea. And then I start looking through my random, my random things. I'm just trying to think. I had thought about putting it right down to the bottom. Yeah, I think I like it there. And then the last uh, thing for the prompts is um, your handwriting. So I made this little wish list of things that I'd like to do, which is all about self-care for next year, 2024. I definitely um, would like to and need to lose some weight. And it's not just so that I look pretty, it's for my health. And um, so I'd like to I'd like to lose some weight. I'd like to exercise more. And I don't know where I want to put that. I was kind of thinking there, but I don't really think. I think it cuts up too much. Oh, well, maybe. I kind of like it there, I think. It's kind of like layer the labels. Because the other thing that I didn't use at this point is a key but I thought I haven't used washi tape for a while and I love 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 washi and I found this little washi that um, is keys just a bunch of little keys so I thought that I could get this maybe I'll put a line of keys there I guess um, but then I have I found instead of putting background I found all these little pastel. Okay, so we cut out there, but I was saying I found the bunch of pastel ones that really match. So you can't hardly see it even in the video, but I've put a little line of kind of a, a purpley line there with, with some keys. Um, I just thought I would make like a few little, little boxes, um, just some random to add some interest uh, on the page and to kind of set some of the images apart. Now with collage you often want it to all kind of blend in but some sometimes you do want to um, make different parts kind of stand out and I haven't used wa washi for a bit so I'm thinking that let's play with some washi today. Maybe it might give you a inspiration for your next project. For sure, I think that's good. And you can tear the washi, um, and I often do, like I'll just uh, tear it, but for this pro project, I just want it, my edges um, to be straight. Um, and that's just kind of how I want it, this, this one to look uh, today. I love, love, love these little washies with the um, kind of uh, graph, the grid on it. I just think they're so, I really love them. So with this one here, let's just go across the top. So with, as I was saying kind of in the beginning, with this collage, I tend to spend more time thinking and finding than actual uh, do, doing the you know doing the actual collage and there's nothing wrong in that I'm finding right now though that I'm I don't feel like I'm necessarily running out of time in my life 
I just feel, sorry if my head gets in the way, I just feel I don't have enough time right now to do everything that I want or I want or need to do. And that's crooked. And of course I'd rather craft than anything. And sometimes I have to make a sacrifice in getting, you know, other things done when I'd rather just craft, such as make a meal, which is why I was kind of saying, like, in the future, 2024, I want to try to figure out how to do all my crafting on my days off. It'd be lovely if I was at this point retired, but that's that's a few years off now, I think. Um, but then I think I would have more time to do, spend time with friend, family and friends and make nice meals. And I do use the in Instapot quite a bit, um, which is, you know, lovely. You can do a nice meat and, and veg dish. I don't really like that. Now I pull that up, it's gonna... All right, let's abort that mission because I don't like how that looks. And I'm gonna go with this one. The other one I could use, the, this is a constellation one and it's more of a paper washi. Oh, I do like that. Because that kind of reminds me of snow, like how in the evenings when it's snowing and you have a light on, how it kind of sparkles as the snow's falling down. Now the, this is um, supposed to be some kind of like the constellations. I think it's pretty. So we'll see about we can get this one down. Um, and, you know, sometimes I find if I really want, sorry, my arthritis is, uh, you bother me today. And when it's bothering me, I find it hard to do that little rolling motion. Oops, hang on a sec. Um, I find so sometimes that if I really love an image or a layout, or something and uh, then it, it gets ruined in some way I rip it or it just doesn't go down right then you can always find something that would look probably just as nice maybe not in your mind okay so I'm gonna move this probably off camera a little bit because I want to get that oh, 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 oh no see this is how disasters happen. So I'll have to put something there, I think. Because that'll stand out like a... Well, I guess I'll have to put... It, this is uh, reality come to life. I'll have to put a little bit there. I can figure it out later. You can't really even see, to be honest. And that there, it just kind of looks, it stands out more on camera, but in reality, it just looks like it's part of the blending in, because that there is really sticky. So I've got another piece that I can put somewhere, I could put over here. Oh, I'm not sure, but I still need something there, so let's try this one. I think that'll stand out too much. Maybe the pink, and then I can frame it in. Or maybe that mauve color, because that's really subtle. Let's try that. Yeah, we'll try this. And if it doesn't go down well now, it's staying down. It's not like I'm putting it uh, on my wall. There. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got some washi down, which I think helps it stand out um, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, and it's definitely kind of cold weather, isn't it? I mean, not as in, well, temperature cold, but cough and cold season. Seeing a lot of that at work. And with COVID, even though I just heard on the news there's a, a new strain out, um, the last going off, it's not been as uh, fatal as when it first, first came out, of course, with vaccines and just it, people getting a bit of immunity. It was like in influenza. Um, Back in the 19, what was it, around the wartime, um, the Spanish flu, I believe, was in influenza. And it, um, it was very fatal. Um, and it was the first form of influenza. Uh, I was just lo looking up the dates, 1918, uh, the flu pandemic. Uh, and 25 to 50 million, it's gen gen generally ac accepted, um, died. So um, it's been COVID has definitely been hard on our our population and generation. But um, as with the flu, it, it eventually becomes uh, ingrained in the population. Oops! And you you, you know what I just did? W were you guys thinking? You just covered your your tuck spot. Maybe I'm talking too much. Um, so sometimes, and this is just a little hint, and uh, if you have something that's sticky and you don't want it to be sticky, you can take, um, this is a little powder bag that you use for dry embossing, and if you, but you could use cornstarch or, I mean, just an idea. Sometimes it can cause a little bit m more mess. Um, but if you just powder it a little bit, uh, then it takes the, the, the sticky out. Um, and I use that sometimes as, as a trick when I'm using double-sided tape and or a glue. Sometimes um, if you use Tombow glue or, di or different glues, uh, it, it's a, it stays tacky um, and then it's tacking on things. Um, so just put a little powder on, on it. But that's an aside. Um, so here's my layout for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And until uh, next time, my next video um, should be going out on Wednesday. Um, and um, then my Daphne's diary will come out on next Friday. So until I see you again, I, I do hope you stay safe and well. Uh, and bye for now.